This is going to be a bit of a hodgepodge video. We're going to look at aging of the skin, skin color, as well as fingerprints. Aging of the skin, something that you need to know in almost every general A&P class, is the changes that happen to skin as it ages. Here's what happens. It gets wrinkly. <laughs> okay. What occurs is that the skin becomes less supple, it becomes less elastic, it doesn't bounce back the way it used to. What happens is the collagen underneath just kind of loses its springiness. Wrinkling usually starts around areas of greatest facial expressions. Now, if you're some whippersnapper in class and your teacher happens to be wizened, like I am, I've got the gray hair, okay, don't start making fun of them because wrinkling starts in your mid-twenties. Yes, your mid-twenties is when this thing starts for you, so be careful out there. The mid-twenties around areas, like I said, of greatest facial expression, such as your eyes, your mouth, and your brow. So you might have heard the expression, it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. And you know, if you frown, you get wrinkles faster. Well, this is all facial expressions. And I probably just added a few wrinkles just moving my face to give an example. So I hope you appreciate it. <laughs> Major factors which can cause increase in the aging of the skin. For those of you who are sun worshipers out there, those of you who are going to the beach or the tanning bed, stop. Sure, you might look hot right now, but when you get to your 30s, you're gonna look like a dried up handbag like this lady. You don't wanna do that. So be careful, the UV rays will break down those collagen fibers even faster. Now, I'm not saying you have to hide in a cave, but be aware that when you go out into the sun, you're buying pretty for now for bag person later on. <laughs> I probably just lost a bunch of viewers for that little thing. All right, let's look at skin color for those of you who are staying with me. There are three factors affecting skin color, and that is melanin, keratin, and hemoglobin. Now, we looked at melanin in a previous video. Melanin is a brownish pigment that will give the skin a color from pale yellow to black. Melanocytes are most plentiful in the mucosal membranes, face, and extremities. Remember the number of melanocytes remain the same for all races. It's the number, it's the amount of melanin produced. Here's another one. This is one of my favorites and that is keratin. Keratin is found in the dermis. Here's a, here's a quick question for you. Now I'm from Florida. That's where I went to high school and undergrad. South Florida. And in South Florida, we have these flamingos. We both have them as birds as well as decorative lawn ornaments. <laughs> and every flamingo you see in the pictures, if you go to Bush Gardens in Tampa or you go to Disney World or anywhere else, flamingos are that nice, pretty pink color. But is pink their natural color? The answer to that is no. Flamingos, by default, are white. It is the diet high in keratin that they feed the pink flamingos that give them their pink color. If a human ODs on keratin, they will get a yellowish look. If you've ever used bad self-tanning products, so you use the products that will give you that tan without going outside, it might turn you orange, that's keratin. You might OD on keratin in your diet. Let's say you get like a juice maker and you start throwing carrots in there and other yellowish vegetables or greenish veg or orange vegetables that might give you an orange look. That is too much keratin. You also have a disease, by the way, that will also give you that orange appearance, and that is jaundice. The way to tell the difference between somebody with jaundice and somebody who has so much keratin in their diet comes down to the whites of the eyes, the sclera of the eyes. This is pretty cool FYI, by the way. The whites of the eyes will remain white in somebody with too much keratin in their diet. The person whose eyes turn orange or yellowish orange is jaundice. They're building up some stuff in their body they shouldn't be building up. And the last part that influences skin color, that gives us a healthy look, that gives us a pinkish like you're alive look as opposed to you're undead, is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the part of the blood that will carry oxygen. It is the oxygen carrying component of the blood, hemoglobin. And when you have hemoglobin, you have a pinkish living color. If you're not getting enough hemoglobin, you might have cyanosis. That's when you get that bluish tinge. So those are the components that give us skin color. The last thing I wanna talk about in this video is the epidermal ridges, otherwise known as fingerprints. These come from the papillary region of the dermis underneath. They push up and cause the fingerprints to form. 
Now, conventional science says that fingerprints are there for a practical reason. They're there to increase our friction of our grip. However, as I was researching for this particular lesson, I discovered that there was an article published in the Experimental Journal of Experimental Biology by Dr. Enos, and he did an experiment where he tried fingerprints versus non-fingerprints. He found out that fingerprints actually decrease the friction of our fingers. It actually decreases our ability to pick things up. So, one article doesn't disprove anything, but it does make us think that maybe this isn't what we think it is. In most anatomy classes, they want you to know that fingerprints probably increase your friction, the ability to pick things up. Also, fingerprints have another valuable function, that is identification. No two persons' fingerprints are identical. Even identical twins' fingerprints can and most likely will be different because of changes in movement and changes in their environment during the birth and as well as during early childhood.